weighted factor 7. Factor 7 is equal to the weighted factor 9. To plug the puncture point in cardiovascular system. Is that clear to everyone? Yes, please. Okay, he really want to know, there in, in, no, no, I understand. Uh, Dr. Suhil want to know that more intimate affair between the coagulation factors, how do they activate each other? Uh, if you want, I can make a bed here and explain that. Yes, let me know. Look. <coughs> I will just uh, explain one step and remaining you have to understand. The most important step to understand here is how the factor nine, number 9 activates the 10 and how the factor number 10 activates the prothrombin. This is the most uh, juicy thing in soldier's game. Right? Now, look. This is sofa. What is the sofa? This is a lot of phospholipid made sofa. So what is this? Platelet surface. What is this? Platelet surface. And on the platelet surface, um, first of all, we have to talk about activated factor 9. Is that right? So activated factor 9 comes there. Uh, I will make activated factor number 9 like this. Sitting over here. Now it is about to activate whom? Factor number 10. So here is factor number 10. Not very happy and not very interested to be activated, but somehow happened to be there. Factor number 10. <laughs> now, very important thing. This is one correlation factor, this is other correlation factor. First correlation factor has to activate the second one. Chances are there may be just run away. Chances. So nature has been very good. First, decently put on the, you have to sit in a romantic way of what phospholipid membrane. It has to be there for this activation process. Right? That is why we say there should be phospholipid, phospholipid. This phospholipid membrane is the surface provided by the platelet. Platelet membrane is phospholipid. So just sitting on the platelet. Factor number 9 and factor number 10. Secondly, don't let them run away. So, what should we do? We should make very special type of, what is this? Oh my God. 
Das wird die Ja? Vor das Calcium. Calcium is interacting between the phospholipid and coagulation factor and some calcium is interacting between them. And the calcium should hold everything together and stabilizes the complex. Is that right? No problem with this. Now which factor is already stimulated? Factor number nine. Look at this. Very naughty. Factor number nine. Right? And it wants to activate factor number ten. And under these circumstances, you may need third party which will enhance their affairs. Is that right? And third party here is, yes, who is hiding here and helping them to do their work. Right? Very, very silently. Right? But keep keeping them together. What is this? Factor number eight. This romantic business is done more effectively in the presence of factor number eight. So on the surface of fossil effect, calcium holds the inactive and activated product, uh, coagulation factors tightly to each other as well as on the fossil effect, and then cofactor like factor number eight will come over there. And then now the reaction. What is this? Factor number nine. Right? <laughs> it is trying to stimulate. <laughs> is that right? Now factor number ten will become activated. Now what it will do? Yes, who will tell me? What factor number ten will do? It is activated. It wants to activate someone else. So that is like love affair. You want to love someone and he wants to love someone else. Right? Is that like this? Nine is trying to activate the factor number ten, and ten is trying to activate now factor number two, which is pro And then it's just like so much romantic that ten will arrange another fast so fast. Right? And on this, this is still which membrane? Fast over that. And this is factor number? This is factor number? Yes. Nine. And this is factor number? Ten. Right? Now factor number ten is activated. Right? Too much excited. When it gets activated, now it is interested in activating prothrombin. Now let's look at the prothrombin. Yeah. Right? Now what is this? Factor number 10. I never knew you were excited with the diagram. This is factor number what? That prothrombin. Prothrombin, if it is sleeping, it is pro. Right? Pro stands for prothrombin. If it is sitting there comfortably, no problem. But this naughty factor number 10 is activated now. It is interested to do something there. Right? And of course, in the presence of? In the presence of? In the presence of? Factor number 5. And of course, what is this? Fossil effect. And of course, calcium should be arranged to? Is that right? Now, this will activate what? Prothrombin. And when it becomes activated, we say, what is it now? Prothrombin. And something very unexpected occurs. <laughs> it become activated. What is this? What is this now? Thrombin, activated thrombin. Now what it is doing? It is going to take innocent fibrogen and fragment it down. Right? What is this? Fibrinogen. Fibrinogen. And release its fragments. And these fragments will fall over all of them. Right? And fibrin monomers will be there. Right? And here it is very important to understand that calcium can only bind if this coagulation factor that gamma carboxylated at glutamine catheter area. Is that right? Because later on we will study that warfarin is a drug which does not allow the gamma carboxylation of glutamic acid residues during the synthesis of coagulation factor. And if you work, it does not allow the gamma carboxylated at glutamine catheter area. Is that right? Because later on we will study that warfarin is a drug which does not allow the gamma carboxylation of glutamic acid residues
Is that right? Because later on you will study that warfarin is a drug which does not allow the gamma carboxylation of glutamic acid residues. the synthesis of correlation factors and if you warfarinize the patient, if you give the patient warfarin, patient has the correlation factor but they cannot interact with calcium, such correlation factor cannot work in stimulatory cascade of correlation system. Is that right? Any There's no question for sure. Now, if I ask you, What is the meaning of hemostasis? Hemostasis means that how bleeding can be stopped after injury. Hemostatic process has multiple steps. Step number one is vasoconstriction. Step number two is temporary platelet plug formation, or which is also called primary platelet plug, or which is also called primary hemostatic plug. Then once the platelet plug is formed, over that coagulation process may deposit the fibrin strand network, primary hemostatic plug. Then once the platelet plug formation, injury. Hemostatic process has multiple steps. Step number one is vasoconstriction. Step number two is temporary platelet plug formation or which is also called primary <coughs> platelet plug or which is also called primary hemostatic plug. Then once the platelet plug is formed, over that coagulation process may deposit the fibrin strand network and then primary plug with the coagulation and fibrin, fibrin Network now primary plug is converted into secondary plug. Is that right? And in the blood, a big secondary plug is called thrombus. Is that right? And outside the blood, platelet plug with coagulation is called clot. Now listen. If I say there's only coagulation, it means only coagulation factors interact with each other and make fibrin coagulum. Coagulation means fibrin coagulum. But if I say there is thrombus, it means platelet plug plus coagulation is within the circulatory system. Right? But if I say there's clot, then it means platelet plug with coagulation is outside the circulatory system. Is that clear to everyone? Right? If I say if I say there's only coagulation, it means only coagulation factors interact with each other and make fibrin coagulum. Coagulation means 
phải biến quyền lực Okay, there is thrombus. It means later plus plus coagulation is within the circulatory system, right? If I say this clot, then it means platelet plug with coagulation is outside the circulatory system. Is that clear to everyone? No problem? For sure? Any question? Yeah. Okay, now he has an interesting question. It's a really good question. He says once the thrombus is formed, right? Or, okay, we talk about platelet plug is formed, bleeding is formed, right? Of course, then what will happen? That platelet direct growth factors will come out and some smooth muscle will proliferate here. Some fibroblast will come here, laid on the collagen. This is becoming healthy. What really happens to this plug? First of all, we have to answer a question. Why this plug and coagulation process does not spread all over the circulatory system? Answer is already there. That I told you that out of the injury area, right, for example, blood is moving from that side up to this direction. Right? The blood flow is in this direction. Here is the healthy endothelium. You remember healthy endothelium, even if some platelet this from there and come, they will repel them. Secondly, if the activated fibrin monomer comes, you remember? Plasminal tissue, plasminogen activator is coming and converting plasminogen into plasmin which cut down the fibrin strand. Even if some thrombin come here, thrombomodulin will be utilized to bind the thrombin, it will activate protein C and S and which will break down activated chapter 5 and 8. Then if some, uh, you can say, uh, here is uh, heparin sulfate, right, that will also bind a special protein anti-thrombin trait. And any activated chapter number 9 or 10 or 11 or 12 coming to this area, cut 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 broken down. In this way, healthy endothelial sites or healthy part of the circulatory system prevent the undue spread of coagulation process. Now, I come to answer your question. That you said a plug is formed here, what is the feature of the plug? The dangerous feature of the plug is the blood flow dislodges and it starts moving into blood. Then it converts into embolus. Then it converts into embolus. It's a pathology. It's not a good news. What is embolus? It is thromboembolus because thrombus has been converted into embolus. Embolus is the is a piece of thrombus moving into blood, going the downstream, eventually blocking a small vessel and may damage that tissue. Clear? This is one. That is me embolize. Other thing is that tissue plasminogen activators are activated. Tissue plasminogen activators are produced too much. Too much plasminogen is converted to plasmin, and plasmin starts cutting down all the fibrin, and platelet disintegrate, and plug disappears. That is called dissolution of the thrombus, a platelet plug. So either it becomes embolus, which is bad, or it becomes dissolved with the time, and which is good. Or a lot of fibroblasts come into it and lay it on the collagen, and that is a sort of permanent grave of that thrombus. Right? There is a collagen, we say organization of the thrombus into it, and liquid. Plasmin starts it's moving into blood, going start moving into blood, then it converts into embolus. Then it converted into embolus. It's a pathology. It's not a good news. What is embolus? It is thromboembolus because thrombus has been converted into embolus. Embolus is the thromboembolus is a piece of thrombus moving into blood, going the downstream, eventually blocking a small vessel and may damage that tissue. Clear? This is one thing that it may embolize. Other thing is that tissue plasminogen activators are activated. Tissue plasminogen activators are produced too much.
plus. This is one thing that it may apply. Other thing is that tissue plasmina can activate or activated. Plasminogen activators are produced too much, too much plasminogen is converted to plasmin and pl start cutting down all the fibrin and platelet. and plug this is too much plasminogen is converted to plasmin and plasmin start cutting down all the fibrin and platelet disintegrate and plug this appear that is called dissolution of the thrombus after cutting down all the fibrin and platelet disintegrate and plug this is That is called dissolution of the thrombus, a platelet plug. So either it becomes embolus which is bad or it becomes dissolved with the time and which is good. Or lot of fibroblasts come into it and lay on the collagen. And that is a sort of permanent grave of that thrombus. Right? There is a collagen. We say organization of the thrombus. So thrombus, a platelet plug, may and that is a sort of permanent grave of it becomes dissolved with the time and which is good. Or lot of fibroblasts come into it and lay on And that is a sort of per or it becomes dissolved with the time and which is good. Or lot of fibroblasts come into it. Put on the collagen. And that is a sort of permanent grape or it becomes dissolved with the time and which is good. Or lot of fibroblasts come into it and lay it on the collagen. And that is a sort of permanent grave of that thrombus. Or lot of fibroblasts come into it and lay it on the collagen, and that is a sort of permanent grave of that thrombus. Right? There's a collagen. We say organization of the thrombus. So thrombus, a platelet plug, may undergo embolization, may undergo dissolution, may undergo organization. Is that right? Or sometimes a thrombus is formed such a big that whole what happens? Whole blood vessel is occluded. Is that right? So this goes on such. Look, sometimes injury is too much and thrombus form all over and it, oh my god, there's a drying room there. So not people. Now. So thrombus is totally blocking it. What is the future now? Actually, under these circumstances, these endothelial cells grow under the influence of growth factor. And from this side, outer endothelial cells grow, grow over it. Are you understanding that? So this is surface is endothelial. And because a lot of growth factors produced by disintegrating. Like. So those growth factors will stimulate these endothelial cells, they will further proliferate these endothelial cells and start growing from both sides into the deeper layer of thrombus. You are understanding it? So solid endothelial cells grow from both sides and make interconnection. Why is it happening? Because a lot of layers are buried there and they are releasing later derived growth factors. So later derived growth factors not only proliferate the smooth muscle here, not only activate the fibroblast here to seal this point. Even if it is occlusive thrombus, occlusive thrombus means Thrombus which occluded totally, inclusive thrombus, after endothelialization, endothelial pods move in. They meet each other. Then central endothelial cell undergo disintegration. And you have developed a new vessel within the 
from us and blood may start flowing again through that area. And this is called re-canalization. And then with the time, it starts enlarging and thrombus is pushed on the side and re-canalization. So what may happen to us? It may disintegrate or dislo disintegrate and dissolve or it may embolize or it may get organized with fibrous tissue or it may get re-canalized. Am I clear to everyone? Last question. Ha, <laughs> So, or it may get placenta. It may disintegrate or dislodge. This will the time it starts enlarging and thrombus is pushed to the side and re-canalizes. So, the central endothelial cell endocrine 